Hey guys, let's talk design tools for a second. So there are a ton of tools in the marketplace, right? I mean, if you're a UI designer or if you're a UX person, you're gonna at some point use a prototyping tool, a wireframing tool, or you know, a, a pixel perfect tool, let's call them that. And there are a ton of options. There's everything from the kind of standard, the old guard, if you will, of Photoshop, which let's just be honest, is kind of shh, if you're doing screen design and Adobe then came out with XD, there's Sketch, there's Figma, there's Framer, there's Origami, there's all these different things, each trying to fill a little niche and piece of the design tool market. But let's talk about Framer X, the new tool from the team at Framer. So where I work, the team that I lead, we originally started this is for context so you know where I'm coming from when I give you my opinion of Framer X after having played around with it in the beta, having used it a bit here, having talked to the Framer X team, some of the questions and concerns I have with it before I could actually bite off and jump in. So for context, my team, we do a lot of enterprise grade mobile applications, meaning we work for Amazon, Target, Best Buy, Walmart, the little mom and pop all the way up to the big shops doing the apps that their employees use. And so we've got some requirements around those and we do a fair amount of team building you know, apps where we've got multiple people on the project. We inter interface with the engineers. We help do the business analysis, requirements gathering, the testing. So kind of everything we do a little bit of. And so for a long time, we've been using Axure as one of our main tools. Uh, in a different video, I'll get into exactly why we use Axure as heavily as we did, but kind of like the key points were it had a built-in team system so we could do um, storing prototypes on SVN and then check in and out pages so multiple people working in a prototype at the same time without getting on each other's toes. And it also had a really nice way of getting stuff onto devices, you know, with a with a web page. So for our needs, it fit it. But then as the market's been shifting, we switched over to Sketch for a lot more things. And then eventually now we primarily use a combination of Sketch and Framer. And we've even started doing more Framer straight from the code, not even the design view, but pure Framer code, because it gives us so much more power and capabilities with what we can do. So enter Framer X into the equation, the new hot thing from Framer, which got me so excited because I was like, oh, next version of Framer. And then as I started to see more and more of it, my opinion started to shift a bit. My excitement kind of cooled a bit. And then by the time I got my hands on it and I saw the demos from the team, I realized a couple of things. And one is that Framer X looks to be an incredibly powerful tool if you have the right workflow for it. And what I mean by that, because it's built on React, and the whole thing is that, you know, as you're designing these components, they're actual React components that the engineers can use. That's great if your engineering team uses React. The team that I work with, though, either uses Xamarin C Sharp based, you know, projects or native Java for Android. So React isn't something we really do. So I've, the React component piece doesn't really add value for me and my team, just being honest. But then as I looked more into Framer X, they pulled out the code view, right? Yeah, I know you can get to code for individual components, but you don't have a view yet of the entire code for your prototype, which is what we had been using so heavily before in Framer because it let us do for loops and make reusable things and basically make miniature apps that ran really nicely. And yeah, the learning curve was there for sure. And FrameRx has a little bit less learning curve easily. But by removing the code view, it removed one of the main value props that Framer had for my team. Again, we're a unique situation, totally understand. So when I look at Framer and I compare it to Framer Studio, sorry, Framer X compared to Framer Studio, or Sketch or any of the other tools, Framer X has kind of lost a little bit of the uniqueness for me that Framer Studio had because aside from being having more control over the micro interactions in Framer X, 
the value it adds isn't there compared to what Sketch can do with the new prototyping in Sketch or even using Zeppelin in combination with Sketch or Envision, right, with Envision Studio, right? So when my team thinks about it, at this point, we're not even considering Framer X anymore as a tool that we're going to use. Yeah, we'll look at it and we'll kind of keep an eye on it. You know, and if we do React, maybe we'll change our mind. But at least currently, uh, the opinion that we have is that Framer X is going to be great for the right people. We're just not the right people. So that's kind of my thought on it, is that Framer X is this really cool tool that if you use React and you have the right workflow or you're looking to get into the React flow and you know, you're investing into that language, great. It's going to add a ton and it's going to be you know, a really, really powerful thing for you. And maybe you're just starting off with apps and that's where you want to do. Awesome. I think that's the direction Framer as a, as a company wants to go. But if you're in the enterprise space or consumer even, but if you're in the space where you're not using React, not having that code view, not having that ability to have some of the more powerful features of Framer Studio where it's more of a, a miniature app itself, a very lightweight app that you're building, it's lost something for me. And then by making it purely React-based and not being able to use any other languages, it's limited its focus and usability across the engineering teams to the point where I can't go to my engineers. Now, like if Framer X, for example, let you pick between whether you wanted to export React or Java or a bunch of other things, I would be all on board because then my team could build the components to hand off to the engineers and have a more seamless interaction and integration between us. But because it doesn't, it's just another tool on the pile. So my end of the day take on it is that Framer X is awesome for the right context, and I'm just not the right context. So that's kind of my thought for the day. That's my little mini rant as I've been messing around with tools and, and playing with things right now. So thank you guys, and we'll catch you in the next one.